So here we are. Today's start of the mission is to replace the heat exchanger on a Volvo Penta TMD22 fitted to a Beneteau 473. The reason for this change, as you can see here, is the corrosion on this part of the exchanger. The aim is to try and do this with the engine in situ. Access is not too bad on the 473 as I can get to all front, back and side. However, the only problem I foresee is the is removing the exchanger off the block because there are two stud bolts which I'm going to have to try and reverse undo and that is to actually try and remove them as bolts rather than studs but that is the exchanger there as you can see it almost fits out that gap except for the last probably three or four inches going around to the front of the engine the uh, this section here is actually what needs to be removed in terms of preparation what I have done is I have required the replacement exchanger and all the associated parts for the replacement so we have the exchanger itself although not actually required via the workshop manual I have purchased replacement bolts and replacement studs of which there's a total of eight washers some o-rings that will be required when certain aspects are taken off for example this will need to be removed as the oil cooler will be put in here instead of this cap the gasket for the turbo onto the exhaust exit new studs and bolts for fitting the turbo back on and of course this came as a pack but the only part I'm actually going to need is this silver part which is the gasket for the exchanger onto the engine block. First things first is to remove all the water from the heat exchanger which will be done there's a drain valve underneath um, so that will be done then I will start dismantling parts on the heat exchanger I'm probably going to try and remove the heat exchanger with the turbo which is this all in one go however I'm going to need to somehow get the exhaust pipe off the uh, off the uh, exhaust elbow here just take off some of the other pipe work that's coming from the uh, seawater pump remove the oil cooler and then start to undo the eight securing bolts to, of the exchanger some point I will rig a support line this does weigh quite a bit so I will rig up some sort of support line to take the weight when the bolts start to come off so now we're getting to draining the water from the exchanger so I have now attached a hose to the drain the bleed valve and currently it's above the water level so I can now just take it off there bring it down and then subsequently fill up my jug and just continue doing this until all the water is drained away so here we are end of the first day and uh, might not look like we've done a lot but uh, I managed to start dismantling the turbo and upon further inspection that's going to need a clean anyway so it's a good thing it's probably coming off it's quite a bit of carbon caked up inside there along with the exhaust elbow um, taking one of the caps off the heat exchange and as you can see the corrosion there is not great um, 
cooler at the bottom of the heat exchanger has now been taken off and uh, that's all in good good condition and ready to go back on the new one so I'm going to call it a day now and then return next time to continue so to provide more room um, what we have done is removed part of the insulation and soundproofing material off the bulkhead and that has probably given us an extra two inches um, to work with in addition it assisted in getting the exhaust elbow off um, the turbo and then subsequently as we can see the turbo is now exposed and has actually proven it also could do with a clean so while we've got all these bits off we will undertake that job as well right one of the issues I was going to face by keeping the engine in place was when it came to actually removing the heat exchanger the heat exchanger is secured on by uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bolts of which two bolts, this one and this one, are studs which basically means that the heat exchanger needs to come off the length of the stud to come out as we can see here it starts moving but quite simply the bulkhead here gets in the way so the issue we had here is how how to remove the heat exchanger without having to take the engine out or start drilling wood into the into the boat so what I have here is a stud extractor what a stud extractor allows me to do is um, secure the secure this on to the stud and then using a wrench or a socket basically then allows me to treat the stud as a bolt I will cheat because I've actually already undone this. This is just for an example perspective. And then if I keep going, out comes the stud. And now we have one removed heat exchanger. So now I have to clean up where the old gasket was, get that cleaned off and flush again nice and smooth. Um, and then probably just clean around this area while it's off. Uh, get some uh, wire brush to some of the rust marks where there's been some leakage from the heat exchanger and uh, get it all tidied up, cleaned up and then start reassembling. Right, cleaned off all the old gasket from the uh, engine block and now ready to start reassembling the new heat exchanger onto the engine. So the heat exchanger with the turbo is incredibly heavy so I've generated a pulley system off the winch on the coach roof and now this is currently suspended and will take the weight while I maneuver it into the engine bay. So after a bit of a Chinese puzzle in which is the best way to get it all in because when I removed it of course I didn't have the turbo attached or the bottom part of the exchanger attached but it is now in the engine compartment currently being supported by the, uh, the hoist I made and now it's time to align it up and start putting it back together. 
Right, after a bit of manipulation, wiggling and some sweat, the exchange, the new exchanger is now on. Torqued up with the new turbo and pretty much all looking good there. So now it's just the assembly of all the extra bits. One fitted, new heat exchanger and a new turbo. All the parts have now been put back on including a bit of a respray of the exhaust elbow. So now oil cool is back on and now filled with coolant. So now comes the time of starting the engine. 